<laughs> do, you, uh, do you pick up the Robusta in here? Some Robusta. I think this is a Robusta Arabica blend. I picked up something that, that I wouldn't like to associate with Arabica. The two main commercial species of coffee, of course, are Arabica and Robusta. All of the really fine coffees are Arabica species, and there's some efforts to try to... Robusta, it tends to be flat, a little bitterish, full-bodied, but flat without any acidity, kind of lifeless and uh, simple, often bitter. And now there are specialty Robustas that people are trying to get us to like, sell at better prices yeah. so the producers get more money, the roasters make more money. That's still a work in progress. What I'm getting is a kind of a, it's sweet. I'm getting a sweetness, but then a kind of woody flatness. It's, yeah, it's sweet, but there is that flatness. You notice that the, the woodiness is not cedar, it's not even fresh fur. It's more old board. It is very different. I mean, I'll be shocked if it's at all similar in the cup. It's odd because I'm getting a kind of a salt, which is a projection because I'm not sure you can smell salt. But I, maybe yeah. I just expect it because it's Robusta. Do you have anything else on the aroma, Kevin? The Robusta, we think, scent certainly distracted me from going to any of the other things. I'm getting a kind of a sweet, a pleasant sweet rubber, like fresh rubber. I'd just like to point out, when you say that, I know a lot of people associate rubbery with a, a not pleasant, but this is the, the positives of rubber. The new car smell is partly that, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid and I got a new tire for my bike, I wouldn't put it on until I'd smelled it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, I did that too, but I... Sound, I, I, well, I hope we, it doesn't sound perverted we, or anything. We, <laughs> well, I was going to say, we are both maybe a little eccentric. It's a perfect uh, foil, this coffee, for number one, for the Whole Foods breakfast blend. This is kind of flat, it's fuller bodied, has much fuller mouthfeel, but it's flat mostly uh, distinguished by an absence of interesting aromatics That's it. or flavor. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, nothing much there. <laughs> yeah, I think you can find chocolate uh, kind of a, it wants to be chocolate. It almost pointed there. Yeah. And there's a kind of nut. There's definitely nut. You get the nut? Mm -hmm. I should have picked that up in the nose. Yeah, I don't know what nut to... Usually if I get a bitter nut, I'll, but I like it, I call it walnut. Sweet nut could be uh, almond, for example. And there's a salty sweetness, the combination, the structure is a kind of salt and sweetness in a package. I can imagine uh, somebody who drinks these coffees enjoying that uh, salty sweetness. Yeah, it's... Enjoying the it's full okay. body. It's okay. I mean, it's not, I, I wouldn't say this is a bad tasting cup. It isn't a strong enough impression to call it bad. It's the sort of blend that the uh, blenders, they could be proud of. In other words, their goal is to produce yeah. a pleasant, palatable coffee from inexpensive beans. Right. Robusta and maybe um, inexpensive Brazil or other natural, lower grade naturals. If I were talking to the blender, I'd say, yeah, you did well. They did their job. There, this is odd, a little bit of floral top notes. They sort of float for me over the uh, this sort of salty, uh, uh, rather heavy, salty, nutty, sweet. I could associate the nuts now in the finish. I'm getting the nuts very clearly. I think the, I could associate the nuts with something nice like cashew even now i'm getting some raisin, raisin dried yeah. like dried fruit sweet dried fruit as it cools i would say it's maybe i'm getting used to it partly but it's as it cools i it's 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 certainly not turning in any way bad it's i'm getting a little more yeah 
you can see, you know, it's partly expectations. I can imagine somebody who drinks uh, coffees like these regularly to find that this is a good example. Certainly the opposite of the breakfast, of the sort of light, bright, lifty, uh, citrusy, uh, floral coffee we had first. This is, uh, but somebody who drinks these might find that coffee obnoxious, so I don't know. So what is it? Uh, well, here we go. Let's reveal. Zoom in. Oh, it's an Arabica. It's Arabica, right? I know. Yeah. It's, the claim is yes. It's we got suckered there. Well. Yeah. Yeah, because 8 o'clock advertises all Arabica, right? It's real simple. Ingredients, Arabica coffee. 8 o'clock always uh, advertise Arabica. Well, I tell you, 8 o'clock is um, produced by, is now owned by Tata Coffee. Tata, yeah. Tata Coffee is a part of a huge conglomerate that I think the steel produ produ producers, originally Indian yeah. uh, company, as poor quality Arabica coffee. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> lower yes. grown Arabica coffee. I can say that whether it's it's Indian low grown Indian coffee or more likely lower grade Brazil coffee. Since it's a Tata is an Indian company, international in its reach. They own the label and the branding, and it does have additionally more. It's in their story. They they talk about the original, our oldest recipe and most iconic roast from Latin America to East Africa. Our master roasters carefully search the world for premium Arabica beans, medium roasted to deliver sweet and fruity notes with a well balanced finish. Uh, you know, I would say it's balanced. Well, it's a well balanced finish, yeah, balanced. and I would say it's sweet. Uh, what's the oxygen? Eighteen percent. Oh, oh. Well, there we have our uh, our answer to yeah. to the <laughs> yeah. taste conundrum. <laughs> the oxygen is eighteen percent. It's kind of high. Uh, it's very high. What? It's do quite they, high. It's, an, it's the high enough broken? so that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's tricky, right? You have these these bags. You have the yeah. the button. In that kind of bag, that this kind of packaging, the, the film goes by in a line like this, and a machine inserts the, uh, I may be wrong, inserts the, uh, the buttons, the valves, to keep out oxygen. But at any rate, something went wrong well, in the packaging. Can you guys zoom in on the, on the, the inside of the valve? Yeah, there's the... There it is. That's the inside of the valve. There's the outside. And, uh, In Chicago. The outside. <laughs> and the <laughs> presumably this valve, when it's operating right, and many, most of them, I think, do operate right, it doesn't allow gases in. It only allows gases out. Right. That's to allow for the degassing of the coffee inside. Now, often something goes wrong with these valves. Yeah. Well, They're not in, inserted right, or who knows? But at any rate, I think I think I feel better about our, uh, our mistake on the coffee species because I think that the flatness that we're getting is owing to the fact that the coffee is probably quite stale. I wanted to mention one thing. This is best used by February 23rd, 2025. So there is far from the four month window. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's something like, it could be up to a year because it's yeah. they're forecasting this will be fresh. And at 10% into it this far, uh, this is, it's pretty sad. Of course, it could be a bad sample. We can't, we can't know that. That's really up for the company spokespersons to say, you know, that they'll bl blame it on that, you know, a one-off, but it, it definitely, the that at that rate, yeah, I could guarantee you we would not be tasting super fresh coffee. Make one more point, <laughs> is that probably, I know some European roasters 
have a two-year window for nitrogen-flushed coffees. I don't know of any American companies that do, but mm. since Tata is an international, uh, even though this is an American, all-American brand, 8 o'clock, it could be that their, their practices relate to the European practices of uh, two, mm. two year. I know when I was in Germany working, I was shocked at very long uh, dates for uh, assuming you know, that everything has, seems to me, everything has to be perfect for two years to work with this kind of packaging. They do further claim that the coffee was roasted in Maryland, USA. Uh, it's a uh, half-dead Arabica, folks. Yeah. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.